I will continue reading from the Genesis passage that Catherine began, starting with the 16th verse. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our own image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image, in the image of God, God created them male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done and rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I need to establish up front that I will not be debating the historical or scientific veracity of the Genesis creation story in this sermon. Because in reality, this creation story is a discourse on the faithfulness of Israel's God. It is an assurance that God is with them and us even when life is chaotic and unsure and that God's covenant is for all of creation, inanimate, animate, and human. The creation story written while the Israelites were in Bab Babylonian captivity was composed to assure them that despite their present circumstances, residing under the dominion of a foreign power, surrounded by people who did not know or worship their God, God acknowledge or respect their culture, traditions, and living in confusion and chaos, that their God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything came, contained therein, is faithful and had not abandoned them. However, this is Earth Day Sunday at East Liberty Presbyterian Church. So let us briefly recount the creation story. In the beginning, God created, God spoke, and it was so. 
God formed the heavens and the earth, sun, moon, and stars, light and darkness, night and day, land and sea, animals in the land, water, and air, and vegetation. And on the sixth day, God created humanity in God's likeness and gave us authority and responsibility for all of creation. And God declared everything created was very good. The psalmist writes, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you, Lord God, are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. We are created a little lower than God and crowned with glory and honor and declared by God as very good. And yet we have made a mess of God's good creation. We have ravaged, neglected, polluted, and destroyed. We have overworked, overharvested, hunted, killed, and maimed. In a sense, we have ruined the goodness of God's creation including our own humanity by the way we mistreat, malign, and harm one another. In this land of plenty, inflation is making it even more difficult for people who are already living with insufficiency to put food on their tables and to provide the necessities that they need. Parents are struggling to find formula to feed their babies. Deadly fires, rains, floods, and tornadoes are ravishing the land. Overt and covert racism, injustice, social dysfunction, misogyny, transphobia, inequalities, and sexism. These are all destruct destructive forces against everything that God created and that God declared as good. So how do we reconcile the goodness of God's creation with our neglect, destruction, and abuse? There is no justification. But thanks be to God, reconciliation is possible. If we take accountability and admit our guilt, admit that we have fallen short and sinned against God, creation, and one another, if we humbly seek God's forgiveness and direction, and if we become obedient and do what God commanded in the beginning, to be responsible stewards and caretakers of nature in one another, then reconciliation Recreation can and will take place. One commentator shares, the biblical creation narrative is a document of faith. It is a quest for meaning and a statement of religious position. Dare I say that it is time for us to seek new meaning, to declare our religious position and under God's direction faithfully usher in a new beginning a genesis in our own hearts, lives, relationships, our own homes, and yes, even our church. To begin again and to deliberately seek after and discern where God is leading us in this moment. Could it be that we are to reenact the cre creation story? Last Sunday, Pastor Randy stood and shared these words from Ecclesiastes 3. To everything there is a season, and for every matter under heaven. Beloved, this is our season to faithfully walk into a, the new thing that God is doing, to embrace it, to live into it, and to prayerfully accept that just as God's creation was good in the beginning, God's new creation will be the same. As good stewards, we plant trees. We minimize our fossil fuel consumption and the use of inorganic materials. As faithful people of God, we hold companies accountable for deforestation, for plundering the earth from, for, of its minerals, and overworking the land. We demand that everyone has clean air to breathe, is treated equitably with respect, justice, and mercy, and have agency over their own bodies. And as followers of Christ, 
who challenged systems and governments and religious leaders who were more concerned about form and fashion than worshiping God and supporting God's people, we too are called to hold leaders, systems, and institutions fiscally and morally accountable. And we are called to treat one another with dignity and respect. God is still creating. Creation was not a one and done event. So as we move into a new season in our personal and corporate lives, it may seem chaotic at times. It may be unsettling and disorienting, uh, disorienting, and yes, it may even be sad. And, uh, not but, and God is faithful. God is with us, and God has promised to never leave or forsake us. Beloved, everything must change. Nothing remains the same with, few, with just a few exceptions. God's love, grace, justice, and mercy, those things never change. The command for us to love the Lord our God with our whole hearts, body, minds, and souls, that never changes. To love ourselves and to love neighbors as ourselves, that never changes. Our assignment to be stewards of God creation also never changes. It is from everlasting to everlasting. We are called always and without ceasing to be faithful creators and caretakers and vessels of peace, mercy, grace, justice, reconciliation, and love. That was a new world order under Jesus. You know, that's what he ushered in as he walked on earth and led by example. On the sixth day, God looked around and saw that everything God had made was good. Matter of fact, God declared, everything is very good. May it be so. Amen.